Hey, I'm Bailey. Um, I am the one of the main Mario 64 speedrunning community uh, Nintendo 64 controller sellers. So I've sold off of a recent count. Uh, this is December 2nd, 2022. Uh, I've done this for a little over a year and a half. I've sold like over 200 N64 controllers. So uh, I've cleaned, greased, uh, lubed, I guess, if you would rather, uh, all of them. So I figured I would share my bit of an expertise here and uh, just take apart this controller um, and clean her up and show you all how I do it. So you can do it as well at home. You can do it with your own controller. I have dyed black buttons, by the way, and a brew bowl. So um, I treated my brew bowl the same as an OEM bowl. Uh, mine's made of steel. Um, I treated it the exact same. So nothing different. So you will see a part in here that I have that you may not. Um, and it will look different but it's the same same shape same function so that's all um all you're gonna need really is uh isopropyl alcohol a few drops really i just have this because it's good to have like in your house um i literally put like a little teeny dash in here and that's still more than enough i have a screwdriver um this one has like fancy detachable heads so you can get the correct size really cool Excuse me. Toothbrush. I got this at like the dollar store. Don't brush your teeth with it. That's gross. Come on. Um, a few Q-tips. I have two. One for the buttons and the pads and the shell, and another for like the actual like module. Um, I have your super lube. If you have plastic pieces, all plastic, all OEM, you're gonna want this. If you have plastic and steel, like a steel bowl or a steel stick on an OEM bowl. You're going to want this, but if you have a steel bowl and a steel stick, then you're going to want some other fancy grease. Um, but if you have a steel stick, chances are you've been talking to someone who knows about them. So, I, I don't know. Personally, I don't have a steel stick yet. So, uh, that you don't want that on with metal on metal. Here's what you're going to want to buy. It's on Amazon. $5. Literally, type in Super Lube. I got mine on sale for like three. Um, so, I bought two of them. This is more than you will ever need. Okay. I bought two of them. I've been using this for 150 OEMs, and I still have probably more than half of this left, okay? You don't need a lot. This will last you your whole lifetime, and your kid's lifetime, and your genetically perfect great-grandson who's going to get a 13 and 16 star will use your same thing as Super Lube, uh, because this shit will last you forever if you're only using it for this. Um, and I just have a magnetized screwdriver. Not necessary, but it really helps with the controller pack or memory pack, or whatever. These two screws up top, but it's not really necessary if you don't take them out, which you don't really have to, but we'll get to that later. So if you have a magnetized little screwdriver like this, that helps, um, but not necessary. Okay, that's really all. Uh, I will get right into disassembly first, and then I will do the actual cleaning of the buttons and the pads, and then I'll do the stick module and we'll put it back together. So, uh, enjoy this video it is unedited i did two takes for the intro and the rest of it is just like first try whatever i got i got so uh yeah i'll put all my socials down below uh, my twitter discord etc my shop so if you want to buy a controller from me uh, i will lube it for you the first time uh very exciting and actually someone did pay me once to lube it again they sent it back to me and i lubed it and i reshipped it to them so that is an option uh but yeah uh, all that stuff dm me on discord if you have any questions i will be glad to help uh yeah that's about it so we will get right into it good luck have fun this shouldn't take too long your first time 45 minutes half hour not crazy uh yeah that's it good luck soldier Okay, my apologies if the audio is kind of shit. Uh, I don't feel amazing, and my equipment's not um, fantastic either. So I'm going to start uh, by just disassembling. We're going to take apart the seven screws on the outside. So nothing too crazy. Um, if yours are having trouble coming out, uh, push really hard, okay? Like... You gotta kind of hold it in a weird way and push down with your screwdriver really hard to kind of create some tension. Because uh, if you strip strip the screws, you're kind of fucked. Um, you can get them out, but I've had to use like 
like a like an impact or a drill before, and it's really annoying. Um, so if if it's having having some trouble, reposition yourself and push down hard. Um, make sure you have the correct size screwdriver. Um, ideally, you can just leave the screws loose in here in the back shell. Um, I have the seven ones done. Three, six, seven, yeah. And now I'm going to do the two smaller ones on the inside. Just get them nice and loose. Mine are already pretty loose because I don't tighten mine super, super much. Um, just kind of wiggle it out. There you go. If you leave all the screws in here, it's easier for later. So just set it on the side. Um, we are left with the inside. Here's, uh, here it is. Ooh, uh, shiny. Um, you can take the L and R button out. Mine are black. I have black dyed buttons. I made them myself. Um, if you want to set, uh, DM me. I can get you a pair. Um, regardless, uh, here you go. We're, we're gonna also loosen up the pads so they have a little slot they fit in. Just take those out. And then for the Z button pad, you'll notice this, this side is uh, loose, or this one can move. This little clip here can move. So I'm just gonna pull it with one finger and just nudge it out. There you go. Those three are kind of moved out of the way. Uh, and we're gonna take those three screws out next. So you can, you can see them on the stick module. The three silver ones. Just take your three silver ones out, but leave the black one in. So leave the black one in for now. Uh, we'll just make everything easier. Um, now this video is mostly focused on the stick module, um, but I will briefly go over how to clean the rest of your controller if you want to. Um, but again, this is mostly a, a detailed thing on the stick module itself. So now that you have these three screws loose, you're gonna wanna like just force it out of the hole a bit and grab onto, and what's a good way to show this? These these wires it's being attached to on the board. So you can see it's all willy-nilly and whatever. You're gonna wanna just grab them tightly. Um, oh my gosh, this is so difficult to show. Uh, you just wanna grab them and, and just kind of pull out. Just kind of wiggle it a tad bit. And it sometimes requires some force. There you go. You can just pop it out of place um, from the spot on the board right here. So now that you have that out, we're going to focus on that next. But if you want to clean the rest, if you have an older controller or you haven't opened it up before, you can just pull the wire out of its little slot and just lift the board out. Uh, set that aside. You don't really need the board right now. I'm just going to throw it on the floor. You're left with three button pads, button pads, Z button pad, and your D pad pad. So this, you can take all your buttons out. <clears throat> they all have their own hole. They go in um, their own, own orientations. Um, the C buttons are kind of tricky, but they all have their own pattern, uh, and you can just fit them all back in. But once you once you take them out, you know what? I will just I'll just do it. Take them out, throw them to the side. Use isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip and clean those off. Um, and you have the shell. You're gonna want to clean like the individual holes. There's a lot of dust and grime in there, I'm sure, if you've never done this before. So just go ahead and clean all these out, all the outlines, and then you can also do the outline of the shell. So you're gonna notice there's a, a groove kind of on the very edge you can run your finger nail along. You're gonna to want to get all that out there. Just makes it look nice. Um, again, you don't have to clean your stuff, but it makes your button pads feel better. Um, if there's no like dirt or grime or anything in between them, so clean off your buttons, uh, clean off the holes, clean off the button pads. Uh, button pads just use again Q-tip isopropyl. Um, for the big one, you might use a toothbrush, but be careful, they can rip. They rip very easily, so just be careful. Uh, you don't want to destroy them because they're not usable once you rip them. 
Um, it sucks, it happens though. But just be careful and you'll clean them off, no sweat. Very easy to put back together. Just, uh, they all have their own spot, can't mess it up. It's very obvious when you haven't put it back in the correct place. Um, and once you put all of them in, just slide your button pads back on and we can move on to the stick module. Woohoo! Okay, now that we have our buttons and stuff back in place, I'm just throwing it on top of my PVM. Um, I have a PVM because I'm cool. Uh, that's the only reason I bring it up. We're moving back to the stick module. So, here she is. Mine's very tight. Uh, it's actually a smidge loose, but it's very smooth, etc, etc. Yours might feel terrible. Um, and hopefully, by the time we clean her all up, it will feel better. Um, sometimes not. Sometimes it does come out feeling worse, and I'll explain that. S explain why that is later. Um, but hopefully, uh, we can clean all that gunk out. And uh, yeah, it'll look nice and pretty. I like to start holding it like this. Uh, just two fingers and one on the back, thumb on the back. Kind of pressing it together, and we're going to remove that black screw. Um, the three silver ones should already be out, and I threw them over to the side. Um, and you just take that black one out. Um, just keep some pressure on these so it doesn't like... It, it'll kind of open on you and makes it difficult. So now we can actually open it. Um, I like to hold it. Just hold the bottom. And then these two tabs up top need to be... They're very sensitive, so you can rip these easily. But you can just kind of open one up. Um, and then the other... So there you go. Just be careful. They get slow. And you can just pop the two little tabs up top. These two. You can just pop them up. You will, you'll have your, your thing come apart in two neat halves. So this is the gate half. Because um, this is the gate. And this is the... I don't know. Like the bowl half, I guess. I just kind of made those spot terms up on the spot. So we have these, these two halves. We're going to work with the, the bowl half first. Um, so when you take it off, we're going to have this. We have the PCB. Ooh, cool fancy. We're going to have the bowl. Uh, mine is a brew bowl, so yours is going to look not like this. Um, but it will be the same shape, whatever. Treat them as the same. And we're going to have the large gear. And then obviously the, the house it sits in. <clears throat> house you can set aside, whatever. Probably nothing, no dust in there. Uh, if there is, just, you know, remove it, blow into it, Q-tip, toothbrush, whatever. It's not going to be too crazy. Um, PCB, you just don't want any dust in it along the receptors um, or whatever, sensors. Uh, my camera is not good enough to get like a focused photo of this, whatever, but uh, dry toothbrush, whatever, this has no liquid on it, that's why I do it first, and just kind of brush it out. So all the nooks and crannies, just get all the dust out of there, nothing too crazy. Boom, you're done. Set her aside. Big gear. You can do it a few ways. Excuse me. Oh my goodness. Okay, big gear. Whatever. Just hold it, nothing crazy, and just toothbrush it out. There's a few nooks and crannies in here that you don't want dust in, so ever just brush the gears off. And honestly, if yours, mine's not really dirty at all, because I cleaned it a few weeks ago, and I don't really play very often, so it's nothing, nothing crazy. Yours might be full of dust and grime or whatever. If it's so bad, you can use a Q-tip. Just dunk it in the ISO alcohol, it doesn't need to be dripping, just a little damp. And uh, just kind of go up and down in the center and all around and whatever. Just get all the dust off, it's not too hard. Um, and, and just put it aside to dry. <clears throat> I doubt it would be beneficial to put it back in your module wet. So here we have the bowl. Your bowl has two uh, little spinning discs on them. If you are not careful, uh, you can break them. You don't need to take them out nine times out of ten. You just use a toothbrush, whatever. Just get all the dust out of the wheels and all the different spokes, I think that's what they're called. Um, even if necessary, again, Q-tip with iso alcohol. Just a little dip. Just the damp, like not damp, or I guess damp, not dripping. And just kind of get all the dust out of there. 
if you are so inclined to take it out, you can move this arm back and forth just slightly enough to push it out. Um, again, you don't need to. Uh, if you feel so inclined, you can, but it's not really worth it. Uh, if you break it or break the leg, your shit's busted, okay? It's just not worth it, really. And you slide it in the same way. Um, it's kind of like top hat shaped, uh, if you will. Um, and it goes back in with the like top of the top hat facing outwards. Okay, just like that. Okay, you see how... This is a terrible analogy, I guess, but you get it. Okay, the rest of the bowl, the inside, you're going to want to take a Q-tip with ISO alcohol and just, just get all the gunk and grime out of there. I'm kind of glad this thing is transparent so you guys can get a decent vision of what I'm doing. So, just get all that gunk out of there. Um, if, if there's a bunch of buildup in there, which there might be if you haven't done this before, you can use like the tips of the toothbrush and just kind of like wick it out. Ever just be sure to get most of it. Um, nothing too crazy again. This is a really simple process. Anyone can do it. I taught my 10 year old brother how to do it. Very, very simple. You're, you got all the dust out of there. Feel free to pause if there's a ton of gunk and build up in there. Sometimes it gets really caked in there and it's kind of hard, so. Just give it a few minutes, maybe maybe put a drop or two of ISO in there and you know let it soak for a second, but again, not too crazy. And once you're done, you can just set it aside. Going to the this side. We we have a few fun pe a fun we have pieces to play with that are uh, a bit funner, a bit more difficult. So that's why I do the other side first. Again, put your fingers on it in like that V shape push down on the spring uh, and you can twist the gear out of there small gear good voice crack uh, and the rest just kind of falls out gear and washer nothing too crazy just toothbrush and you know get all of the dust off there it's not gonna be terribly crazy and the worst OEMs I've seen that's about as long as it would possibly ever take to clean it same with the gear or not the gear, the washer. If you are so inclined, you can use a Q-tip. Get the inside, get the outside, get the other side. Again, nothing crazy. Uh, the stick. The actual stick. Uh, I like to use a toothbrush. A lot of stuff gets caked and stuff on there. Uh, so I like to use a toothbrush. Just get it off. You can use a Q-tip, but... Sometimes it gets stuck in the little in the little holes and whatever, so I find a cute toothbrush to be easier. But again, it's mostly just preference. Uh, there's some dirt and dust and stuff built in here already. So just take a moment to remove it. And then the top has this hole in it. Um, I don't like gunk being in there. So you can take, again, the tip of the toothbrush, a few bristles even, and just kind of poke it in there, force it in there. And just kind of wick that stuff out. It's not crazy. Not crazy hard. Just get as much out of there as you think you need. And you're good. Set that aside. Small gear, same as the big gear. Just use a toothbrush. And just get all the grooves and axles and axes and whatever. Get the gear teeth. Flip it to the bottom side. There's two holes in it. Um, the holes are like right here and right here. Don't want anything in there. Um, if necessary, you can use ISO alcohol. But again, just get it nice and clean. It might have scratches or dents or scrapes or obvious like shavings in it but there's nothing really you can do about that that's like a physical loss of matter so you can't really do much about it so just clean to your best of your ability and uh, that's about all you can really ask for onto the gate this is one of the most important pieces i think i think people really underestimate the uh <clears throat> importance of the gate and keeping a good gate so 
Um, I like to clean this one the most, I guess. So just a dash of iso alcohol, and in the like top here, I just like to clean out all the walls of this inner gate. So just like on each actual part, just give it a good few swipes. Uh, do some like circle-y action. Just get all that gunk out of there. Kind of wipe it down on my t-shirt a bit. Uh, and I just get all that stuff out of there. In that center hole, there's some like dots on the left and right that I'd like to really get in there. Just make sure there's nothing hanging out in that center. Uh, flip it to the back. Same thing. Get through the center. And then on the back, there might be a lot of buildup of dust. I see a lot in there usually. Um, and that's like a toothbrush kind of deal mostly. And you can get this outer ring with a Q-tip. Uh, just get all the dust out of there. But mostly this is fitted for a toothbrush. So you get the tip, the tip bristles and just kind of get all the gunk out of there. Whatever. Nothing crazy. Make sure you get most of it. Blow it out. Whatever. Once you get all the all the stuff out of there, just give it a minute to dry. If you have another Q-tip, you can use it as a, a drying tooth Q-tip. Uh, whatever, it's nothing nothing crazy. All the dust, all the gross stuff you don't want in there, get it out. And now we're going to start uh, the lubing process. So this is where your super lube is going to come into play. This important bad boy, and you want to lube. Dude, why did I close it so tight? You want to lube to make it last longer. Um, this is, if you have just a standard OEM, it's a bunch of plastic gears and pieces just rubbing against each other. Um, and the more you do like that spinning motion with your OEM, um, I use this for throws, by the way. So it, it, this is not like a this controller is fond of being destroyed. If you if you do the throws motion or th this just grinds everything together. And it's plastic, so eventually it'll run down. So. And even just moving it, doing harsh side flips and movement and just using it in general will wear down the pieces. So you might have parts of your gears or your gate that have a bunch of scratches or like a bunch of gunk in there because it's just been destroyed. So you lube it to preserve it, uh, make it last a little longer. A good lubed, well taken care of OEM can last over a year for sure. Uh, if you're real aggressive, maybe a bit less than that, but just every few months just lube it. I didn't lube my my personal OEM super often because I don't like a super luby controller, but um, I, I did a pretty minimal amount just because I preferred how it feel felt, and likely you're just going to want to lube as a good majority of the parts. You don't have to lube everything, but I will give you, I'll tell you what I lube, <clears throat> and I'll, I'll, I'll give like a general consensus of what some people like to and don't. So. We'll start with with the gate so on the gate here you can see how am i gonna hold this i did not prep for this video by the way at all so this is all just kind of off the whim you can see that there are four like divots in this part so there's one right here one right here here and on that other side so on that that out that like center ring you can kind of see like the four cardinal directions there's a little little uh, little divot there so if you take your lube not a lot now we use very sparing amounts of these just like the teeniest little drop coming out like that's even a bit too much uh, just the smallest little size of lube just so that a tad is sticking out and you can just kind of touch it on that divot. So again, you get a smidge coming out. Just touch it on those four divots. Nothing crazy. Just, just touch. And you'll see the smallest little dot is left behind. So you can put there. I've seen people do it there. Um, and then the front. The front, I think, I like to have the most amount of lube. Um, but... Some people don't like that feeling, that gummy feeling, sort of. So, um, really just take a, just a, again, a small amount. I don't even, 
I don't even know how small to call this. You know, like a like a ballpoint pen. You know how big the little balls actually are, like in the tip of the pen, like something like that. Like just a little small amount, just a, a tad, a touch. Okay, there you go. You can kind of see. I just got like a like a little pimple worth, not even like a blackhead or something. And uh, I just rubbed that in, same way how I cleaned it. I go up and down the sides. Uh, and then swirl it along, like a circly motion. So there you go. Just be sure you don't miss any large sections, but there you go. Not too much. You can kind of maybe see a little gloss on the outside of it when you're looking, but it's not like really caked in there. Uh, at least I don't like that feeling. And I think most people would agree. So putting it back together, we're gonna hold the gate, and we're gonna take the spring. Um, you'll notice one part, one side of the spring is smaller than the other. So identify the larger spot, um, and that part is gonna be facing like out, up, like this. If you hold it like this, the large section is up here, and the smaller part is like down below. Okay, bigger, smaller, um, and it has uh, the end piece. There's obviously an end to this wire, and that's going to be facing at like 6 o'clock. Um, you see the bottom, and it's facing that way. And your washer has a flat part on it. Where is it? There's going to be a little flat piece, like edge, flat edge to it. Uh, you can kind of see it there, and that's going to go right on that, uh, on that end at 6 o'clock. Voila. You stick going to go up and through the bottom. You're going to have to turn it a few times, get it in there. You're going to want to hold it with one finger. I use my pointer finger um, and, and just kind of coerce it into place. It's kind of tricky. First time I did this, it took me a while. There you go. I thought I completely ruined it and I couldn't get it back in, but you'll get it eventually. There you go. So now that you have, and your stick has like the bottom piece. Uh, I have mine facing left and right, so like horizontally. And we're gonna take your small gear. We're gonna take it so it's facing like the bump is outwards, uh, and, and and the gear teeth are in my pointer finger, my right pointer finger, and my thumb is on the other end. So we're gonna take it, and we're just gonna set it on top and it's gonna push down on the spring and it's gonna go right through the small, uh, through the stick. And we're just gonna rotate it 90 degrees so that the teeth are facing the top. Teeth are facing the top and the the stick itself is facing horizontally. And that's, uh, that's pretty good. If you can do it, yeah, if you're so meticulous, you can kinda hold it in place and move the spring and the washer back into six six o'clock position, but it's not a big deal. Um, they just came in from like the factory that way, so if you can do that, great. If not, it's not a super big deal, I don't think. Okay, now that we kind of get everything centered, so your gear is facing completely up and down, vertically. Uh, the stick is facing horizontal, and it's all sitting perfectly on top of the washer, which is sitting on top of the spring. Um, the last piece of lube I like is just, uh, that ballpoint pen kind of dollop size. Dude, why is so much air in here? Mine's almost empty, actually, which is kind of a miracle. And I just get a nice, that ballpoint pen size, and I just put it right on the top. Just right on there. Just right on that. Boom, just a little bit like to kind of clean it up, just make sure it's a nice real dot kind of over that whole little piece and uh, that's pretty much it. Some people, I've watched a few videos where someone likes to actually apply a very thin layer on the gear, or not the gear, on the washer, it's like on this top of the washer, which would be kind of where the gear sits, but I don't like that and I think it's kind of unnecessary, so that's that's all you do for this part real simple it's kind of i guess that's the hardest part but again it's really not too difficult onto the bowl you will notice that 
I wish I had like a nice DSLR, but I'm using my webcam. Uh, I have an old DSLR that actually looks worse than this. You're going to notice like four of the same divots again. Uh, there's the two. And they're, and they're just on each side of the, the castle walls, if you will. So one right here, 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 and up here. You need the same thing as before. Just get a smidge, little teeny, and just kind of set it right there. And boom, a little dollop will stay behind. Just the uh, smallest of bits in Mala. That one has way too much. Uh, you probably can't tell, but that one, like, I covered the whole thing. So, you don't want to fill up that whole divot with lube. You just want a little smidge. You can even take a Q-tip, like the center bar. It fits pretty nicely in there, and you can kind of, like, rotate it around and kind of integrate it better, I guess. And then on the inside of the bowl itself, mine's a steel bowl, you're just going to be plastic. Or you might have a steel bowl. We might be living in an age by the time this video comes out that everyone has steel bowls and steel sticks. Um, if you have a real steel stick, you're not supposed to use super lube, by the way. If you have metal on metal, there's a different kind of lube that I will throw in the description. But if you have a steel stick, you likely know how to lube your controller anyways. But regardless, I'm going to take a little dollop, that, that same ballpoint pen size. Maybe a smidge more for the bowl, and just drop it right in the center. Just right in there. Just plop. And we take our Q-tip, and we're just going to swirl it around. Just get all of the, the bowl, the sides. Just kind of rub that in. You don't want any big clumps, um, and you don't really want to miss a giant spot. Once you're satisfied, I like to use a bit more because I have a steel bowl than I did with the OEM ones, but you really just want like a thin layer of grease all around. There you go. Once you're happy with your smoothness and whatnot, there's not very many large clumps. We're all set for reassembling. Here you go. Here's your house. Your module fits inside. It has a very perfect, neat spot. PCB goes right back in the top and your big gear with the the bump facing down goes in there facing the right so when you're looking at it on the right hand side you'll have your teeth and you just make sure the big gear is kind of flush the ground whatever it's parallel and you slip oh, slip this bad boy which we have made sure is flush and even centered Yada yada, looks perfect. It fits right back in top. It'll fit together like a glove. You can just push it back in. The two top pieces will snap together. You can hold it in that same V shape again. And put the black screw back inside. Once you screw it in, you're going to want to play with it for a second. Just to see if you like it. Because, again, maybe you probably messed something up. Uh, my first time I had to do it a few times, so it takes a bit to get used to. Um, but yeah, let's drop it really quickly, I guess. Uh, just kind of play with it. Just rub that grease in a little bit. You don't want to do like your Bowser throws on here all of a sudden, but just make sure you can kind of feel all the notches. Okay. Uh, it's It centers itself. It doesn't get stuck if you hold it in a direction and like let it go. And once you think you've done a good job, okay, I'm feeling all my notches are there. They feel very natural to get to. There's no clumps on the inside. You kind of just mess with it for a sec. Okay, I think this is good. There you go. Voila, you did it. You did your first uh, controller module cleaning, whatever. Good job. Proud of you. You did it. It took me a while to do this, so... If it did not take you, if it took you longer than it took me, then don't beat yourself up. I've done 150 of these probably, so don't worry. It only gets easier from here. And we're going to take our bottom shell, or I guess the top shell, and it has all of our, it has all of our buttons and pads. Make sure you're not missing a C button or something while your pads are set in correctly. 
We take our motherboard and we just throw it back in there. That's a very convenient spot that fits and it only fits in that spot. We are going to loop our controller wire back through the pegs. Again, that has a very obvious spot that it has to fit in. Um, you can see kind of how mine is. That's the same kind of pattern you want. It's going to go through those two little orange bits and then up and through these two pegs and back through the top. Um, our L, R, and Z buttons have their own specific little slot they go into. Um, and if the pads fall off of these, they only they have a certain button they correlate with. So the L and the R pads are not the same. So they have to go in their specific one. Um, and they have bumps and it's obvious which ones they go into. And you fit all those back in piece in place. Stick module goes right in the hole. And you get a snap on the pins to the board. And it has a click so you know it goes in. Um, if it's Sometimes it's hard to get out and sometimes it's hard to push in. Um, sometimes I find that I have to use like my pointer finger and like really kind of push it in and get a weird grip on it. Sometimes it takes a minute, but you got to make sure it snaps in or it won't work. Use Z pad, slide it under the, from this angle, the left one, this left little hook, slide it under the left and then you can push it through the right because the, the right side one doesn't move. So this is the one that moves. You can kind of wiggle it back and forth and get it in there. And voila, you've thrown it all together. And now you just need your L and R buttons. Don't forget those also. And uh, they have a hole next to their pads. And they fit quite nicely into. Boom. And then this part can be tricky. So just be careful, take it slow. I like to line up the memory pack first and just get that in that slot. Sometimes things fall out. Just start over, put some back in. You might have some issues with this. Just make sure that everything is like situated in there. Also a reminder, do not forget to screw in your stick module. Um, that is important and I'm not gonna edit this video. So just don't forget to do that three silver screws need to screw the stick back in place okay I don't know how to edit so not cutting that out putting that near the front so make sure you screw those in too so my bad if you rushed ahead and you put your shit back on and you didn't put those in there so maybe watch the whole video before you do this maybe don't blame me now that we have those back in there, again, lol, XD, throw the L and R buttons in there, and the shell. Again, like to start with the memory pack, and you can just kind of wiggle it around a bit. If yours is like ha like almost all the way fitting in there, but it doesn't quite do it, and you're afraid you're going to break it, sometimes you've just got to squeeze, okay? If you can get it on there almost... And it's just having some weird issues where one of the sides is just like not quite making it. You can kind of maneuver it, make sure all the screws are on, and you just got to squeeze it, man. Um, it sucks. It hurts. It makes a noise that you're not going to like. Um, it is kind of uncomfortable, but you got to squeeze it together. If you're positive, all the pieces are in the right spot. Sometimes it just needs to lock into place. And sometimes that requires just squeezing it. And it'll snap. It'll it'll, it'll snap back into its spot. We're gonna screw together all the parts again. Uh, I'll do the memory pack screws last, and I'll show you how I do that. If you if you left all the screws in the shell when you took it off, um, that'll be way easier. But you know, sometimes you don't, and that's okay. I did that a bunch before I realized that I don't need to do that. And I'll show you how I get those back in there. Um, also, I'm missing a screw, so if you count me doing it, there's only going to be six, because this spot just doesn't have a screw in it, and I don't want to get one. Memory pack screws, if they're taken out, if you took them out, um, 
good luck, first of all. Second of all, get a magnetized screwdriver. And you can just very easily just get them out and put them back in. It's kind of annoying. It's kind of tricky to set them up on there. And you can just put it back in there. This screwdriver is not the same size as the screw, but it's good enough to get it back in there. Dealing with them is annoying, so don't don't super over tighten them because eventually you might want to open this again. So just get them in there enough. That's you know it's not gonna take like iron grip to get them out. There you go. You're all set. Um, just play around with the stick for a second. Just make sure again you like how it feels. All your button pads are in there. And uh, yeah, that's it. You can stop the video now, but I'm actually going to do a controller test, just for funsies, just to show you what a good OEM looks like. So, you can access this test on, I think, Muppin64, um, with some specific settings, um, and you can test your controller, or on, um, on your N64 with an EverDrive. Or a knockoff EverDrive. I would recommend buying just a knockoff. Buy a Super 64. Buy an ED64 Plus. Um, check technical help in the SM64 Discord. Um, and there will be more information there. And I will open controller test. And I will switch to this view. So this is the new controller test. Uh, not the old one. If you want the ROM to this, it's in tech help. Um, or DM me on Discord. I will leave all my contact info down there. And uh, yeah, you just hold the stick in this orientation up, up right, right, down, right, down, and you press A when your stick is in that position. And you can do it a few times. And with the new practice ROM, or not practice ROM, stick ROM, it gives you diagonal angles, and you can cycle through with the L and R button. So. Here's just my stick, here's the notches and angles. Um, here's a brand new, perfect OEM controller. So you can see the up, down, left, right has 84, 83, 85, which is really good. Um, here's a perfect Hori, by the way, and you can cycle through these with the L and R button. Uh, and here's just a comparison to a perfect controller. So you can see this controller is really good. Um, I got a lot of use off this controller, so after a year, this is pretty excellent still. Um, up is not fantastic, and left and right aren't fantastic either, though not perfect, but this is still pretty damn good. And if your controller looks like this, and it's tight, and it's not scrapey, then you probably have a really solid controller. Um, uh, but yeah, the closer to 85, obviously the better. Um, but this is pretty good. Uh, and if you have any extra questions, uh, feel free to DM me on Discord. Uh, and I'll help you out. I've done this a million, bajillion, trillion times. So, I, I, I know how to do this. I'm not an expert on how parts interact with each other and why your controller may be uh, drifting or loose or whatever. But I'm pretty good and I know a lot of stuff. So, I'm definitely willing to help. Especially because this is my video and you're kind of obligated when you make it. So... Uh, yeah, that's all. If you have any questions or comments, whatever, yada yada. It's not a perfect video. I rushed it one attempt. I'm not gonna edit shit. So, if you have any questions, DM me on Discord, follow my Twitter, look at my N64 store if you want a controller. Uh, if you buy a controller from me, I will lube it for you, so you won't have to deal with this unless you use it a ton and ton and you feel like it may be time to do it again. Uh, but yeah, that is all from me. Have a good one. Peace. Um... Ooh, I love OEMs. Um, yeah, that's all. I will do a Hori video soon.